spoken. Be, soft spoken, different. Be careful. The ones that are quiet, them the crazy ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't go. When they go off, the they go off. Yeah. You know who's quiet? Aaron Rodgers is a little soft spoken, just a little bit. After yeah. missing seven games with a broken collarbone. Aaron Rodgers will reportedly start Sunday against the Panthers. He posted this picture on Instagram saying, quote, it's been a long road from that day to this, but I'm happy to say I've been medically cleared to return. Thanks for all the love, support, prayers, and well wishes over the past eight weeks. And a big thank you to Dr. McKenzie and our incredible training staff. Hashtag rise again. So, Greg, when you... <laughs> When you look at the situation like this, you obviously you say, oh, great. Aaron Rodgers is back. Everything's fine now. But what are reasonable expectations that you place on a guy who's been out for seven weeks with the injury that he's had and he rejoins a team that really needs you to be playing at your best? That's the reasonable expectation. I need you at your best right now. This is that's a uh, reasonable expectation. Uh, this is Aaron Rodgers. I'm, I'm not if this was any other player and they were coming back off injury, the expectation would be if you step on that field. I'm getting what I've always gotten. Yeah, there is no curve on the grade. Absolutely not. And so for me, they're in a position where they cannot lose. They can't drop one. They have to play their best football right now, whether Aaron Rodgers is on the first game back, second or third. We need his best right now. And I think we'll get that. Uh, when you look at the struggles that they've had, specifically offensively, they haven't been able to do anything throughout the air. He's going to he's going to solve that problem immediately. Yes. His chemistry, I don't think that'll have I don't think that'll be an issue at all. His timing, possibly, but the chemistry he has with those guys on the outside, Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, you don't it, it's not only on the field. You when you have a relationship, when you have a rapport, mm -hmm. you know you you see body language, you watch how they run routes, you don't forget those things. It's just a matter of that timing that they have to get back on the practice field, which they'll do all week this week, and then have that actual game time experience. The, my it, my concern for Aaron Rodgers and his level of play is not that. It's will they be able to protect him when he extends the play. And will he get rid of the ball when he extends the play? Because he can't take unnecessary hits. But as far as what my expectations are, I need you to get us there. Well, quickly, does the game plan change at all? Do you, do you say, hey, just put it in his ear, maybe try not to take too many unnecessary chances? Or do you say, just go out and play your game? He's smart enough to know that. He has to go out there and play his game. I think everyone in that organization, in that locker room, understands the importance of having him back, the importance of keeping him healthy, none more than he. And so I, he's smart enough to understand when to hold on to the ball, when to get rid of it. But I will say it again. I need that greatness right away. I don't care if he didn't practice once this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, when he steps on that field on Sunday, I expect Aaron Rodgers to be there. So here's here's the I guess the the bright side of analyzing this. We've got a really good comparison on what to expect. Aaron Rodgers, three years ago, four years ago, when he missed seven weeks with a broken collarbone, came back. The situation for the Packers was this: Oh, it's week 17. You have to win to make the playoffs. Hey, Aaron, go get us in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And what we saw in that game was 90% of what we typically see from Aaron Rodgers. Total brilliance. He averaged over eight yards a pass. He completed almost two-thirds of his passes, threw for over 300 yards, a couple touchdowns in that must-win game, had an amazing play, if you remember, at the end of the game near midfield, avoided the rush, made the play of the game to get help get them in position for the winning touchdown. The one, yeah, but that was non-typical Aaron Rodgers was that was only the second time all season he had multiple interceptions in the game. So where you saw Rust was not on his ability to make great throws, was not on his ability to lead his team up and down the field. Where you saw a little bit of, oh, he's been gone a couple months, was on the same page as his receivers in sync the way you typically are. Because one of the marks of Aaron Rodgers' true greatness is not just the Hail Marys, is not being able to make every throw. He takes care of the football as well as any great quarterback we've ever seen. So I looked at that Bears game as a good indicator on what we could see in this Panthers game, which is Rodgers probably going to be out there and be able to throw for a bunch of yards, maybe 
have a slightly higher likelihood for mistakes than a typical Aaron Rodgers game. Uh, there would be another a group that would argue the reason why he made those mistakes because, as you said, they were in a must-win situation. When you're in a must-win situation, you're not in a regular season game. You have to try to force the ball into traffic. You have to try to make big plays. But what are my expectations from him? This is, this is tough to do, all right? He had surgery on a broken collarbone. Now, the Packers and Aaron Rodgers decided to take a more aggressive approach, all right? He's got 13 screws in his right shoulder and two plates, all right? That's the most aggressive oh, no. approach anyone's oh, taken to this injury. Now, it helps the injury heal faster. Oh, so yesterday when he got the CT scan, now, they say, oh, the bone is healed. Yeah, that means with a broken bone. That means the bone is 80% healed. A doctor, an NFL doctor, will allow you on the field. So his shoulder's 80% healed. So what's reasonable expectation? I mean, he, he's still human. My, he can't get hit. Like, he cannot get hit and land on his throne. His last um, collarbone surgery, or he didn't have surgery, it was his left. So even if he took a blow, it didn't affect his throwing motion. So for me, I want to watch his accuracy early in the game. Also, if the play's extended outside the pocket or he's running, I'm watching Aaron Rodgers to see if his instincts are exactly like they were before. Because Aaron, he takes a lot of chances. He'll act like he's going out of bounds. He'll turn it upfield. He'll run sometimes when you don't expect him to. So for me, those are the things that I'm really going to watch. Now, you can't duplicate the speed that Carolina and their defense that they're going to have at 1 o'clock on Sunday. So that right there, expectations, we expect him to be great because he has been. And this is not the NBA. Kawhi Leonard, he came back from injury last night. Oh, we're playing 15 minutes, 16. No, in the NFL, you're going in the game until you get hurt again. That's the way we come back from injury. You're going to play as long as you can and play as good as you can. So these are the things that I'm watching. Expectations, I'm not even going to say that, but when the plays are extended and how many times Carolina can contact Aaron Rodgers. Well, Greg, I mean, sh sure. Theoretically, Aaron Rodgers is going to go in and win the game. And theoretically, you're not going to change the game plan because it's Aaron Rodgers and he's done this before and he knows how to do it. But is there a small part of you that's going to say, Aaron Rodgers, you do as much as you can, but we're going to maybe lean a little bit more on the running game or maybe, this, maybe, this yeah. a few other options that we have that maybe we wouldn't have need to go to seven weeks ago that now we're, we might do that? Of course. They've established a running yeah. game. With they have a running young, game. Now. Absolutely. Yeah. With some young studs at running back. And so I think you have that to lean on. And so you can kind of slowly progress him. Into, but he's not, you have to understand, this is the most. Explain the, who Aaron Rodgers is. This is one of the most resilient <laughs> guy. This is a guy who got booed after Brett Favre decided to retire and he jumped into the helm. And he performed like no one thought. No, no one, ex no one had the expectations for him to do what he did. This is who he is. He comes in, doesn't say much. He's going to say all the right things. You know, I'm, we're going to take it easy. I'm going to get in. We got a running game, and then boom, we see the stat line, and it's something ridiculously great. This is who he is. So my my expectation is to see the resilience. Do I un am I am I being too hard? Po I possibly, but this is who I know him to be. This is not a guy who's going to go into this game saying, Mike, let's lean heavily on the running game. Let's let's gradually get me back in. No, absolutely not. That is not what he wants. He's seen his guys struggling offensively, specifically in the passing game, and he's going to remedy that situation. I got one quick question for you before we move on. One thing that you talk about all the time is the importance of practice. When you, it's not just the seven games he's missed, but it's the two months of practice. A, a guy as good as Rodgers, with mostly Devontae Adams played with forever, Jordy Nelson's played with forever. How much of the fact that he hasn't been practicing with these guys the last two months plays into this in your eyes? It doesn't play a whole bunch into it because, I mean, he's just a special guy. I mean, he can put the ball. The routes are all staying the same. Can he deliver the football? I mean, if Dan Marino, I don't know where Dan Marino is at right now. He can throw a slant, a dig, a goal, a post corner. They're just that gifted throwing the football. I mean, he is, I mean, he is so awesome. Watch Jordy Nelson from witness protection to playing in the NFL. It's going to happen instantly.
All right, Greg, stick around. Coming up, was losing Ezekiel Elliott good for Dak Prescott? Jerry